Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here. Today we're going to be talking about designing that CPU again. Today we're still focusing on, in on designing the ALU. If you remember last time we talked about designing the subtractor and the adder circuits, how the logic works in those, and today we're going to be talking about the logic in the binary comparator, which is a very important function of the ALU, often used with jumping, uh, jumping commands, and if statements, and well, other such things. We'll, we'll get to that in time. So what is the binary comparator? Well, let's start by assuming we've got two four-bit words, A and B, and these are both four bits. Binary comparator is going to perform three functions in our case. First is if A is equal to B, second is if A is the second is a greater than b, and the third is a less than b. Now, obviously, this is going to vary. You can make circuits that will check if a is less than or greater to, or a is less than or equal to b, depending on how complex you want your ALU to be. In our case, uh, I'm going to be talking about how to design each of these individual ones, and that's pretty much the most general case that you can imagine. So let's go ahead and look at how you design those. <coughs> Now, let's start by talking about this one, because apparently my pen doesn't like circles. Let's talk about A equals B, because A, it's the easiest, and B, it's the most important. A and B. Aren't I clever? Okay, so let's look at a truth table for A, B, and A equals B. So, I know I said... A and B are going to be 4 bits. Let's just imagine the simplest case where they're both 1 bit. So let's draw a little truth table. We shall remember how to do that. And here, A and B are true, or they're equal, so this is true. Here they're not equal, and here they are equal. So what we have to figure out is some logic statement, some logic operator, some logic circuit, which will return this statement. Now, the way you should do this is you get out a Carnot map, you draw this out, you draw out the truth table, and then you're probably going to go through some De Morgan reduction to figure out what the simplest way to do this is. I think that's a little more complicated than what we're trying to do. I'm not going to be drawing any of those out because I believe that A, you're going to get way more complicated answers than you want, and B, again, A and B, B is that we can do this using ma using logical inductions and logical deductions. So, we want A and B to be equal to each other. So what we're essentially looking for is an equality operator. Now, we do have something that sounds kind of like that. We've got the XOR, which is a difference operator, meaning it returns true if the two inputs to it are different meaning these two here. So it would stand that if you invert this, you would get the XNOR, the exclusive NOR, the inversion of the XOR, which would be the equality operator. Now if you drew it out, if you drew the XOR and then you inverted the output, you'd get the XNOR and you'd see that this is true. Or you could just say, the XOR gives you the difference, so if you have the inverse of the XOR, you wouldn't get the difference, you'd get the similarities, you'd get the equality operator. And so that's what you get. The equality operator is, in fact, the XNOR checks when A, XNOR, B. Or, I think the other way you write that is A, B, or not A, B. No, it's not that. It's similar to that. A dot B or A not A dot not B. There we go. So A and B or not. Or A not A and not B. Because that's not the same as NAND. Okay. So this is true for one bit. As I said, simplest case is one bit. We want four bits, which is four times as many. Just had to check that. So how, when are we going to be able to say that A is equal to B for all four bits? Well, we ha say that when all of A, meaning A3, B, hmm, A3, 
a2, a1, a0 is equal to b3, b2, b1, b0. Hit. You sank my bottle ship. Sorry, bad joke. Okay, so when each bit in A is equal to its corresponding bit in B, so A3 equals B3, A2 equals B2, A1 equals B1, and A0 equals B0. So, each individual bit has to be equal. So every bit in A has to e be equal to its same bit in B. So if we were to draw out the logic statement for that, I'm not going to draw out the logic diagram because that would take up a lot of space, and I think it's important that you see how to draw out a logic statement because it's slightly more useful than a logic diagram, and it's slightly easier to go from a logic statement, excuse me, from a logic statement to a logic schematic with all the gates and whatnot. So A is equal to B. This is for our four-bit words. A is equal to B if A3 xor b3 inverted so that we get the xor or the xnor rather and a2 xnor b2 and a1 xnor b1 and a0 xnor b0 I put so much emphasis on the AND because you need to remember that all of these have to be true. If any one of these is false, because they're all ANDed together, it won't work. It will return false, meaning that A is not equal to B, because if any of these bits does not equal their corresponding bit, it's false. Okay. So that is how you make the equality thing. It's how you check if A is equal to B. Let's talk about if A is greater than B. How do you test for that? Well, let's work out two states, A and B. And we're going to use four bits. So 1010 zero, one, zero, and 1001. Zero, zero, one. So we can see that A3 is equal to 1, A2 is equal to 0, A1 is equal to 1, and A0 is equal to 0. B3 is equal to 1, B2 is equal to 0 b1 is equal to 0, and b0 is equal to 1. Okay. Now, obviously you can see that a is greater than b. a is 10, b is 9. How can we check to see that all of a is greater than all of b? Because you can't just check if all of a is greater than all of b. You have to check each individual piece of both a and b. Now, for equality, we checked each one against each other and if they were all equal, then the entire statement was true. That's not going to work here. You can't just say that because every bit in A is greater than every bit in B, that A is greater than B. Because you can see here, A is in fact greater than B, but not every bit in A is greater than every bit in B. You can see that here that A3 and B3 are equal to each other, A2 and B2 are equal to each other. But it's these two here that aren't equal to each other. It's here that you have to make your deduction. Because if you know that these two bits are equal, it doesn't tell you anything if A is greater than B or if A is less than B. You have to know when they're not equal, when they're unequal, because it's an inequality. So you can see here that A1 is greater than B1. A1 is the most significant ine inequality bit. It is the most significant bit that is not equal. A3 is the most significant bit, but as you can see, A3 and B3 are both equal, so it doesn't matter. So what you have to do is check to see if these two are equal. If they are equal, you have to move on to the next one. If they're equal, you've got to move on to the next one until you find a place where they're unequal. And then you have to draw your comparison. So you can see here that A1 is 1 and B1 is 0. This is the most fundamental case of A being greater than B, 1 being greater than 0. And thus you see that A is greater than B. It's because of this one right here. Now, if you were to keep moving, you'd find that A0 is actually less than B0. B0 being 1, A0 being 0. So, again, significance matters. This is the most significant unequal bit. It is the most significant bit of inequality. So this is the one that matters. None of these other matter. None of these others matter. It's only the most significant inequality bit.
So that is how we're going to draw this statement. So A is greater than B. Oh, don't underline that. A is greater than B. When is that true? Well, we've got to go back to our most fundamental case. We'll call A sub N being an nth bit of A. It doesn't matter how big A is. And B sub N, one, uh, no, got that backwards. 1, 0. Here you can see A is greater than B for any bit N, or for some bit N, rather. The other way you can write this, the more logical way, the more formal way, is A sub N and not B sub N. So for our four bit words A and B, we've got A3 and not B3, or A2 and not B2, and something else. We're going to call this X3. X is going to represent the equality of these two bits. X sub n is, if we go back up here, it's this statement here. It is the equality of A sub n and B sub n. I may have drawn that on the wrong side. Let's move that over here. There we go. Put that there. It did, so x sub n is going to represent the equality of the of bits n. So remember what I said. Significance of inequality matters. If these two are unequal, then none of the other bits matter, which is what this says. If this turns out to be, if these two are unequal, this is going to be zero, and so this entire statement is going to be zero. So in the grand scheme of things, as these are all going to be ORed together, as you'll see, it doesn't matter. As long as one of them is true, there are, it's all going to be true. If one of them is false, it really doesn't matter. You've got to wait and see. So OR. So if these two are equal, you move on to this. If these two are equal, you got to keep moving. So we shall keep moving. Here we're going to say A1 and not B1 and the equality of these two as well as the equality of these two because again you've got to iterate the whole way down. The only reason you should be checking this is if these t th this is equal and this is equal. And there's one more A0, oh that should be an OR a0 and not b0, the land there, and the equality of these two, and the equality of these two, and the equality of these two. You've got to sequence your way all the way down, because the only reason you should be, let me see if I can make this a little more clear, the only reason you should be checking the final statement is if all the previous ones have been equal. That's a little better is the only reason you should be checking this, is if all of these are equal, because this is now the only one that matters. Okay, so that is how you know if A is greater than B. This is going to tell you, you check each one to see if they're equal. If they're not equal, then that's where you draw your, uh, that's where you draw your conclusion. If A is true and B is false, then A is most certainly greater than B for the most Une the most significant unequal bit. Now, if A is 0 and B is 1, then we move into the third and final test. A, draw that on a line, A is less than B. Now, the most fundamental case for this is A sub N is 0 and B sub N is 1. Or written another way, not A sub N and B sub N. Now, it's going to look almost exactly the same as A is greater than B, just with this inverted logic. So for our four bits, not A3 and B3, or not A2 and B2, and the equality of the third bit, or 
not A2 and B2 and or no not A1 there we go and B1 and the equality of these two and the equality of these two and then not A0 and B1 0 not 1 0 and the equality of these two and the equality of these two and the equality of these two Okay, so there you have it. That's A is less than B. Now, why is the or? Why the or? Why not and? Because we had and for the equality operator. In order for them to be equal, they all have to be equal. So that's why you have to have the and. A3 and B3 have to equal each other. Or A3 and B3 have to be equal. And... A2 and B2 have to equal each other, and A1 and B1 have to equal each other, and A0 and B0 have to equal each other. In this case, that's not true. They don't. A, not every bit in A has to be greater than every bit in B, only the most significant one. So it's designed in such a way that if this is the most significant one, this is going to be unequal. So this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, and this is going to be 0. So these all get written out to 0, and this is the only one that matters. These turn out to be equal. This statement's false. This statement becomes true. And then this one's tested. And this will zero out, and this will zero out. And again, this is the only one that matters. The or statement is, to put it simply, it's the only one, you, it's pretty, it's, ooh. the or statement is best used to check if any one out of a group is true. And that's what we're checking, if anyone out of this group is true. Because all the other ones shouldn't matter, only the most significant unequal bit should matter, which is, well, whichever one is unequal. And again, that's the same for A is less than B. You're checking for whichever most significant bit is unequal. And then when you find that one, it should be, because of our equality checks, it should be the only statement that matters. So, there you have it. That is the binary comparator of the ALU, checking if A is greater than B, or if A is less than B, or, or A is greater than B, or if A is less than B. And so that is how you do it. So I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.